In this video, we'll learn how to use OpenAI's DALI model to generate images using R. If you find this video helpful, please make sure you subscribe to my channel so that I can keep making videos like this. As always, the code from this tutorial is available on my GitHub, which I'll link to in the description. Let's take a quick look at the OpenAI documentation for this API. So this is the OpenAI page for using their images API which allows you to interact with their Dolly models. If I use this drop down here, we can see that there's examples for Python, Node.js, and curl. There's not direct support for R, but through the reticulate package, we can write Python code in R and access this API. Here's an example of what the Python code looks like for generating an image. And here we can see that we're gonna need the image function from the OpenAI Python package. The first thing that we're gonna do is load the reticulate package, and then we're going to import the OpenAI Python package into our R environment. We'll do this by using the import function from the reticulate package, and we're going to assign this to an object called OpenAI. If I run this line of code, eventually the OpenAI object will populate in my environment pane, and then we can access whatever Python functions we want from that package. If I try to access the functions that are available through the package that we just loaded, image isn't actually one of the ones that shows up for me. And if that happens to you, it's because the version of Python that you have installed does make a difference. So the version of Python that I currently have installed by default here on my computer doesn't actually have access to the images API. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to create a virtual environment where I install a more up-to-date version of Python, and then I'm going to access the OpenAI images API through that virtual environment. So to do that, I'm going to use the virtual env underscore create function from the reticulate package, and then I'm going to create a name for that environment, and I'm going to call it OpenAI because that's the reason that I'm creating this virtual environment. And then I need to specify the version of Python that I'd like to install into this virtual environment. And I'm going to use version equals 3.10 latest. And if I run that, sorry, that should say a colon there instead of a dot. If I try rerunning that, that's going to start installing that version of Python into that virtual environment. Note that in order to do this, you do need to already have this version of Python installed on your machine. And if you get an error when you try to run line two here, what you can do first is run install Python and then put the version that you would like to install. So I don't need to run this line of code because I've already run that before on my machine. But if you don't already have that version of Python installed on your computer, then you will need to run that before you can create that virtual environment using that version of Python. And once that virtual environment is done being created, we're also going to need to install the OpenAI Python package into that virtual environment. We'll do that by using the virtual env underscore install function, which is again from the reticulate package. And we start by specifying the name of the virtual environment that we'd like to install the package into, which is going to be this OpenAI environment that we just created. And next, we're going to tell the function which package we'd like to install into that environment. And that's going to be the OpenAI package, which is a Python package. So I'm going to run line four here to install that Python package into that virtual environment that we just created. And I'm just going to restart our studio. And that's because I already had the reticulate package loaded. But this time, before I load the reticulate package, I want to start by specifying that I want the reticulate package to be loaded using that virtual environment that we created. So I'm going to use the use virtual env function. And that's coming from the reticulate package. But I'm going to specify that before I actually load the reticulate package. Because if I go ahead and I just load that package, what it's going to do is it's going to try to find the default version of Python that's installed, but that's not the version of Python that we want to use. We actually want to load the reticulate package using that virtual environment that we created so that we have access to that 
images API. Inside of that function, I'm just gonna type the name of the virtual environment that we want to load Reticulate with. And then if I run that line of code, now Reticulate knows that that's the Python installation that I wanna use. So I can go ahead and load Reticulate now. And this time, if I import the OpenAI Python package into R, it's now gonna be looking for the OpenAI package inside of that virtual environment that we created. And that version of the package should be compatible with the OpenAI images API. So now this time, if I try to access the image function on that package, it is available. Let's go back to the documentation. So we need to access the create method from image. And then there's a few arguments here that we'll need to enter. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to copy and paste this into our studio just to make my life a little bit easier. I'm going to comment it out and then I'm just going to convert all of this Python code into R code. So here we're creating an object called response. We're going to need image and then create from the OpenAI Python package. And then inside of that function, the first argument is the prompt. So here is where we're gonna type in the description of the image that we want the Dolly model to create for us. So let's type a white Siamese cat. Here it says that the N parameter controls how many images you'd like to generate. So for now, let's just start by generating one. And then the size argument is gonna determine how big of an outputted image we wanna create. And the size that we choose here is gonna impact how expensive it is to generate this image. So let's start with 1024 by 1024. And if we take a look at the pricing for OpenAI, we can see that the images get more expensive as they get higher in resolution. So generating this image is gonna cost me two cents, but you can reduce that amount a little bit if you're willing to have some lower resolution images. If I were to just try to run this, it wouldn't work right off the bat. And that's because of the fact that it does cost money. So in order to run this, you'll first need to make sure that you have an OpenAI account and that you have set up some sort of payment method. Or if you're using your free credits, this should hopefully work as well. If you haven't set up an account before, it's fairly easy. If you just Google for OpenAI API, you can either sign up or you can log into an existing account and then just select API, and you'll need an API key in order to interact with this API. So if you click your name and then go to view API keys, you can create a new secret key and give it a name. So all the, I'll call this my dolly key. And then if I click create secret key, it's going to generate that key for me. Make sure that you copy and paste it onto your clipboard. You won't be able to see this code again, so if you lose it, you will have to generate a new one. Make sure that you never post your API key anywhere online. It's a violation of the terms of service and people can charge money to your account. You'll also need to make sure that you go to your billing settings and that you've added some sort of payment method if you don't still have any free credits remaining. Once you have that key, you're going to need to add it as an environment variable. So if you're on Windows, you can just search for environment, and then there's an option to edit the system environment variables. And then under advanced, go to environment variables. And then you'll want to click new, and you want to type openai underscore api underscore key in all caps. And then under variable value, you're going to copy and paste that API key that you just got from the OpenAI website. Once you've entered it, you can click OK, and then you can click OK again, and click OK one more time. And if all of that worked properly, you should now be able to run this line of code and generate the image. You might need to close and restart our studio again in order for that to work. I'm just gonna rerun these lines. And then when I tried to run that, I got an error. And the reason for this error is just because there's differences between R and Python when it comes to data types. So the argument n here is expecting an integer in Python, but we passed a 
numeric value rather than an integer value. So to force this to become an integer, we can just add the letter L after the value. And this will now be passed to reticulate as an integer rather than as a numeric value. So we should be able to run that. Just takes a couple seconds to generate the image. And then if we want to be able to actually access that image, there's just one final step here. And this is what that last step looks like in Python. But if we want to convert that to our code, we're going to access the data element of the response list. And then we want to access the first element of that. So I'll use double brackets to access the first element of that list. And then from there, we need to access the URL element. If I run that, I get this super long URL outputted into the console. And then I can copy and paste that URL into a web browser. And there's the image that was generated. From here, I can download and save that image, which you'll need to make sure that you do because the URLs aren't permanent. They actually expire after one hour. And that's really all there is to it. There's some other options available for using this API that are described in the documentation. So for example, you can edit an existing image, or you can also create variations of images that have already been created. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you found it helpful, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel so that I can keep making more of these.